Welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. My name is Don Pelto and I have Naeem here with me and uh, we are going to be talking about some skills uh, for those that are listening that are entrepreneurs. So he is a speaker, kind of a trainer, coach. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey Don, great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so tell me a little bit about, about your backstory, uh, how you kind of got into this whole coaching, speaking sphere and kind of what you're working on, what you're excited about. Absolutely, for sure. So I kind of got into coaching and speaking uh, uh, by accident, also organically. Uh, I, I was working on Wall Street. I worked at a, a fund of hedge funds and I didn't really like what I was doing. And then I started thinking about, hey, what do I really want to do with my life? I just graduated from college and I was in New York City and I was like just young and I never really thought about those things on what do I really want to do? I was kind of just following the modus operandi. So I started reading books and I started going to events and I hired a coach and I worked for Tony Robbins for many years. And uh, hmm. then I just started my own company after that. Like ultimately I did always want to have my own business and I did, I loved the things I was learning and I loved that I was able to help people with living more fulfilled lives, achieving their goals and uh, being happier and more fulfilled and all that stuff. Wow. And what, now, having the courage to do something like that, kind of going against the the flow, right? Because you were the modus operandi was just to go, maybe get an MBA, go into business, something like that. Was it hard to do this? To have the courage to do this? Was it the books that inspired you? Was it the people? And uh, how yeah, that? That, that's a great question for sure. Definitely uh, took some courage because uh, again, my parents were like, "What are you doing? Like MBA, doctor, or something like that?" Which I love too. Like nothing wrong with that. I have a lot of friends that are on, on those paths too. Um, and I honestly thought that that's what I would do with my life. So sometimes I'm like, oh, this is kind of bizarre and cool and exciting that I'm doing something totally different than I thought. But definitely the books were definitely supportive. Like I always tell people, you gotta read every day and feed your mind good stuff. And also mentors and coaches, like having a coach is probably, and I would still probably still say is probably the most or one of the most impactful things I've done. Um, Cause it's really putting yourself around people that are successful. And that's why I like talking to people like yourself, right? It's like, I'm building my business. I'm like, how can I connect to other successful business owners that are ahead of me that can help me grow? So yeah. I'd say that. And then uh, the, the events too, like going to see Tony Robbins originally as a client. And then that, that made me want to work for him because I was so inspired. But like putting yourself in those environments where you're going to transform and for, forcing yourself to do it in like a good way where it's like, oh, every year I'm going to go in an event. Every year... I go to a strategic coach multiple times a year. So it like forces me to grow my business and think in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Both of us are in, that's what we met. We're both in strategic coach. Um, now that's group coaching. Um, I'm not familiar that much with individual coaching. And I think that's what you do now. So talk a little bit about like, how, how does that work? Cause a lot of people listening, they might not know they even need a coach. What are some of the things that you kind of work on and then the other kind of tips that you have? Yeah, sure. There's this great video and there's also a great book. So the videos from uh, Bill Gates and Eric Schmidt, most, I'm sure everybody knows Bill Gates. Eric Schmidt was the uh, former CEO of Google, now Alphabet. But they both said, everybody needs a coach. Mm -hmm. And it's not in the sense where like they're better than you or you, there's something wrong with you. Like the most successful people in the world, they want to perform better and they have coaches usually. And most of us think athletes, which is obviously the kind of stereotypical kind of uh, context where you have a coach, but the successful business owners, celeb uh, actors, salespeople, podiatrists, doctors, like they have coaches too. So a lot of times people don't realize that, but the cool thing about having a coach is it's like somebody that's like totally dedicated to you and like seeing you from outside of the field. Like, cause again, I have blind spots. We all have blind spots. We're in the weeds. So like focused on you, objectively sharing insights. And also uh, the big thing is not really telling you what to do. It's more asking you really thoughtful like, questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like making you reflective. Uh, and again, the big challenge with a lot of things is we all have loving friends and family, but sometimes they're projecting their own beliefs about what they think we should do versus like, and it's a skill set. It's not something you just kind of start doing like you learn how to manage your mindset and your belief systems and your values and your nervous system so you don't like get into like that amygdala reaction where oh like you should do this you should do that or kind of coming from a place of fear if that makes sense yeah i i know i think a lot of us um i'm just speaking to myself because i can't speak to others 
we look for someone where what, what do they say everyone's looking to be to be plugged back into the umbilical cord we're like we're looking to be yeah. led and it and it's a challenge for us to actually go in and say well where do i want to be three years from now like where and then and then having someone to keep you accountable so in terms of coaching like having someone meet with you weekly or monthly or whatever it is and say okay you said you were going to do this this is what you wanted do you still want to go there where are you at is that kind of what you do is you sit down with people weekly or monthly and and go through that stuff totally yeah that's kind of the baseline foundation of it like that's kind of like the i don't, I don't want to say lowest level but like just kind of the the core of what we do and then there's much more like high level skill set things again like seeing what's going on to pick up on patterns like helping people uncover their limiting beliefs or stories that are getting in their way and also sometimes being like lovingly but like giving them a kick in the butt we all need to like be called out on our bs and when i say bs it's not the bs most people think about it's our belief systems because yeah. again we all like you said i love that that was a great metaphor we all want to be plugged back in the, in the umbilical cord because we kind of do like we're not humans aren't brit like made for thriving they're made to survive because we're mm -hmm. still very a very young species like relative in, in the grand scheme of things and we're still wondering if there's like a saber-toothed tiger or like somebody that's trying to eat us so and that's important we got to make sure we survive first but our brain is wired for surviving and protecting ourselves versus like going out and like flourishing so we got to train ourselves to do that and that's why it's cool to again have somebody that's going to kind of push you out consistently and train you to keep on building that that uh, mindset. Yeah, let, let's give, can you give like two or three, some practical tips that can help people that are listening, either whether it be books yeah. or actual mind mindfulness, or I don't know, I have mine that I use, but what, yeah. are, what are some really kind of some low hanging fruit that people could do that they should be doing in their lives? To yeah, sure, happier? sure, yeah. So I'd say one, hmm, let me think. So I, I'd say, my favorite thing i don't want to say my favorite but the thing that was for me and it sounds basic and maybe a lot of people do it, but a lot of people also don't is just reading yep like every day read for at least 15 20 30 minutes if you can if you can't even 10 minutes even five minutes like open up a book and then it's also the type of book like if people really want to improve their mindset and their personal growth and their and their wellness read a book on personal growth like every day for and I do it every day still just because I built that habit and it's kind of who I am now and I love it but like if you just build that habit by itself you're gonna start naturally it's gonna compound and you're you can't not grow and build a better happier more fulfilled life if you start doing that that habit mm -hmm. so I'd say that's definitely one super powerful one I'd say another one is like so and and these are all things you could do for free right like of course people go find a coach I definitely do that too if you want but I'm giving things that people don't need to do that like need money to do it you can do this right now today so the second thing would be put yourself around proximity is power so that's one of the biggest things i learned from tony it's like who you spend time with is who you become so if you want to become better at money go hang out with the pe five best people you know that are just crushing it in money right they know how to invest they don't spend more than they earn they're very frugal they're intelligent they, they they're good with money if you want to have a more intimate relationship with your partner Go find five couples or just a person that's really good at that and thriving in that area. Because most of the times, what do we do? We do the opposite. Like we go to our, 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 our guy friends or our girlfriends and we kind of talk about how men are this way, women are that way, and how relationships don't work versus like finding those people that are kind of making it happen and like spending time with them. Right. So, so that's number two. Just put yourself Great. around in proximity with like high performing people that make you grow and stretch. And then I'd say three. And again, this is kind of along the lines of free things. I was going to say go to an event, but that you have to pay for events usually, right? Like, but there's there's a beauty in paying. If you invest in yourself, there's the law of the universe. Like, if you pay for stuff, you're gonna it's, it makes you commit at a higher level, and also nothing in life is free. There's a price for everything in life in a good way, right? But the the third thing I'd say is meditation. I love meditating, and it's not like a, it doesn't have to be. It's it's not, and it doesn't have to be a spiritual thing. For me, it's more a focus thing. It's like for me, it's like how can I perform better. So for me, when I meditate, I operate like, I can't, I haven't measured it, but like maybe five, 10 times better than I don't. Like, because yeah. my head's above the clouds, I'm out of the weeds. For me, the funny uh, analogy or, or example is like in the matrix when Neo's dodging those bullets, it's like things slow down for me. And mm -hmm. I can like, instead of like being in fight or flight in our nervous system, the sympathetic, right? Yep. It kind of helps you get into your parasympathetic where you're just kind of in a more flow state and calm and relaxed. 
even yeah. though there's like fires burning around, around burning around you metaphorically speaking and you could handle it much better any do you those are all great do you do actively practice like journaling or gratitude journaling yeah. or anything like that any tips for people like is it a waste of time why write and not just think about stuff yeah no that's a great one too and that's honestly that's one i probably would put down to writing is like i always say reading is a superpower and also writing is a superpower like writing helps you articulate your thoughts helps you get the loops out. writing it down is important like you just asked me because it gets you out of your loops in your head if you keep it in your head and you just think about it you're just going to run loops over and over and over so if you actually put it down that's like amazing therapy right simply about negative connotations towards therapy but like amazing therapy amazing like way to articulate your thoughts better amazing way to um articulate your 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 voice better too and speak better um but writing for sure every day I journal as well that's one of my practices so in the morning i write down things i'm grateful for at the end of the day i write down three wins from the day that, that I, I took away from dan sullivan from strategic coach so yeah. that's an awesome practice as well that's awesome how can people get out of the whole um uh dan calls it the gap or like the comparison yeah. gap you know you're kind of comparing to others versus just like measuring against yourself in your own game do you have any mm. tips for that for people that's a great question um these are hard ones i'm giving you <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Well, it's funny because again, like, yeah, as humans, we kind of do that, especially high achievers, right? Because to set a goal, you have to notice what's missing. And high achievers, it's like they hit a goal, they make a million dollars, they start a business, they get the house, whatever it is. And then they're, they, instead of like appreciating it and like smelling the roses, they're like, all right, now what's next? Yep. So they're kind of wired that way. So there's, it's a double edged sword. It's like, all right, let's keep on going. And oh, that's not a big deal. Let's keep on going. They kind of beat themselves up. So I love that concept of the gap in the game where it's like most people they're in their gap. They're always noticing what's missing, yeah. which again, it's cool because that helps you achieve more, but you have to find that balance and you got to turn around every so often, every day, ideally, and even more than that, if you want to kind of just stay in a solid state where it's like you turn around, you appreciate all the great things you've already done and all the great things that you haven't even had to do, that you're blessed to a lot of, if you're listening to this podcast, you're pretty blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm again. This might be an assumption, but for the most part, you're not without internet, and you, you have a device to listen to it on. So it's uh, it's that too. So I'd say, but specifically, maybe it's for me doing the appreciation and the gratitude and focusing on the gain helps me not compare myself to people that are way beyond where I am. Yeah. So I'd say that might be the tool, right? Where it's like. Instead of like looking at my friend who sold this company for a hundred million dollars and I, I didn't do that yet. One is it's also being like, hey, I'm so I'm happy for him. I'm grateful for him. And, and that's so cool that that happened. But also being in the game where it's like noticing all the things that already have happened to you because most people in the world, 99% would give their left leg to be in our position and have our problems. Position right now. You know, I, I agree. And, and I think what, what you were saying in terms of the, the initial three things, you know, um, like listening, I, I read, so I, I basically, I learned this, so it's called Miracle Morning. It's a good book. Mm -hmm. it's talks a book. about that. I, I just basically book out, bookmark a book five pages forward and I'll read like five pages. Um, I've also heard, and I try to do this. I try to read the same book at least two or three times. I think in the nice. past I used to like go through them and just to get through them. I don't know. I have like this high, I don't know. You want to just finish stuff to complete stuff. Yep. But like it's it's the I'm reading the second time now the be your future self this is like the second time I'm going yeah, through it. It's a great book. And, and uh, just kind of as it I I think I transform because I'm a different person. A lot of times it's not even the book that changes, but I'm in a different place. Yeah. And I can take in these ideas. Um, and it's the same way like you said about having friends or having like coaches and and these coaches or these other acquaintances. A lot of people think you're gonna to have to give up all your friends. That's not what it is. It's just you're replacing it with other people that are, are just friends that can inspire you you to do better. You yep. know, that's and if you don't have any, find books that they're in. You know, they can they can be almost be your friend that way too. Yep. It's so like true. Books or like a mastermind group of people like that. I think those are beneficial. But I like the I think everyone needs a therapist. I think almost a coach is 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 a glorified therapist, someone to talk mm -hmm. to and get out of your head about about certain things totally yeah you said a lot of great things um i love what you said about the books where it's like to me if i'm reading einstein's biography like oh he's my i get to hang out with einstein he's my mentor for a little bit and i could always go back to him or edison or ford or abraham lincoln or whoever it is so that was an awesome one 
Yeah. Um, I forgot the other two things you said before that, but also with the coaching, yeah, like it's kind of like a, the thing I've, I've had therapists before and there's not good or bad in every industry. There's great quality and there's not so great quality, right? Same with coaches, same with podiatrists, same with doctors, same with invest, uh, uh, asset managers. But the thing that I love about coaching is they're more focused a lot of times. And again, this isn't meant, it's not a generalization, but a lot of times in therapy, people kind of go and they talk about their problems and you're never going to, there's an endless, that's a never ending rabbit hole. But the thing I loved about coaching was a huge insight for me where it's like, I just focused on my outcome. Like it's okay to focus on the problem and understand it, but you'll never fully understand why somebody made, said something to you in fifth, first grade or your parents did this or a relationship didn't work out the way you wanted it to. And you could go in a loop for the, forever. And that, that same old adage, whatever you focus on is, what you're gonna, is what's gonna expand. So instead of like, for me, that was huge for the coaching. Cause I was like, all right, instead of like, what's the problem? Most people are there in problem frame, which is what I call it. But we want to switch it to outcome frame instead of like, what's the problem? Whose fault is it? Why did this happen? It's like, what's my outcome? What do I want? Where do I want to go? How do I want to make things better? And yeah. that'll like radically change your destiny in any area of your life. There was this real simple concept. I don't know. You probably got into it already in coach called the experience transformer. Yeah. Same deal. So within coach, you kind of look at what worked, what didn't work and what you would do different. Really simple, but yep. like you can go back to your traumas in the past and you can reframe them using that little tool. And I tell you, when we went through that, I went back and I picked the hardest things in my life. Like the thing, yeah. and I went back, well, <laughs> what, what, what was good about that? And it was hard to find what was bad about that. And if I could do it over again, like what would I have done different? Like, and that's a real powerful way to kind of reframe our past trauma, or even I do this with residents in surgery. I'm like, okay, this is the case. What went well? Okay. This yeah. went well. What didn't go well? Well, you cut the tendon, you know, you messed it up. What would you do different? Like how, how would you do the surgery different? And I think having these higher level ways of thinking that really gives you power. So no matter what you encounter, you can use these thinking processes. I think that's the key, the gratitude process, these thinking processes that no one teaches you this in school. Yep. It's so true. I love that you use it in your practice. That's so awesome. I, I love doctors and I love medicine and health. And I, that was probably the other thing I wanted to do. Like I had passion, I saw a passion about like health and wellness and medicine. Um, but one thing, just like, again, you said, we aren't taught this stuff. So I was talking to one of my friends who's an ER doctor. And like a lot of times doctors don't know how to handle like intense situations. So I love that you're using those tools to like work with their patients' emotions so they can make a better decision versus like, it's it's hard to manage that if you don't have the skill set. So I love that you're actually incorporating yeah. the stuff with your patients you're, and teaching you're not, your, your you're people. You're not taught. Yeah, you're not taught. Yeah. Cool. Well, what other, I don't know if you have any other last things or if you want to tell people how they can learn more about you and kind of what you do. Totally, yeah. So if anybody wants to learn more or check me out, they can go to my website. It's naimamud.com, just my full name. Dot com. They could also the link underneath this. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And they can go to my, my podcast is peak performance humans, which talks about all the habits and mindsets and belief systems and behaviors of top performers. Right. So I love to like extra, I like to find people that are really excellent and across any different category of life. And I like to kind of extract their, their beliefs, their thoughts, their behaviors. Cause the cool thing about that is then you can model it. Like that's the best, one of the best ways to learn. It's like, how can you model success and kind of shorten that, uh, that, the, the, what's the word, the, the learning curve, right? Yeah. So that's what I talk about on the podcast as well, or they can go to my YouTube as well. I put a lot of videos on uh, similar topics and subjects. Great. Hey, thank you so yeah. much. Absolutely. Donna. It was wonderful talking to you.